everybody. How you doing tonight? I my drink handy. I'm going to cut to myself. Hello. How's it going? How's everyone doing this Sunday night? Thank you for coming out to episode three of uh, On the Rocks. Uh, for first time people in the audience, and I know it's a very small audience, but thank you for making some time. Um, Vocal is a basically an online video town hall platform that's about to launch. This technology is all vocal, um, and it's going to be launching a little bit later this month officially, and you guys are here at the very beginning stages of it, so thank you so much for coming out. You're basically checking out a cool new technology before uh, most other people in the world, so... Uh, thank you. Today's episode is about uh, failure, like I mentioned, and we have a special guest named Frodo o- o- uh, Odegaard, who is one of our early uh, fans of Vocal. I don't know how he found out about us, but he did. And he's a really interesting guy. He's a uh, perfectionist at heart and perfectionist in denial, and has a theory that perfectionism destroys um, uh, progress in some ways, and sometimes can be a uh, can can hold you back and uh, it's a problem in some ways. And so he'll be telling us a little bit about that perspective in this episode. You know, be proactive about identifying the kind of failures you want to have that are uh, they're going to teach you something. So I call those failures productive failures. And, and those are failures which give you a lot of learning with a minimum of pain. And, and you can make your failures more productive by being much uh, much more aggressive about the questions you ask about your failures. You know whether uh, what the root cause is. If you have other failures happening um, elsewhere, which are similar. Um, what are the long-term consequences of this? Uh, are there some new ideas that could come out of this failure? Uh, and you know, and talk with other people too. Just try and, and generate as much uh, as much value as possible from the failure. And then when you do fail, you know, watch out for negative self-talk. You know, don't treat yourself in a bad way because you fail. You should celebrate the fact that you're learning something. And then the final strategy is not to be afraid of terminating projects that aren't going to go anywhere. Because you don't want to have a list of stale projects that you're no longer excited about. What you want to do is to have uh, sort of a, a, a crisp current list of projects which you are excited about pursuing. And the projects that you know aren't going to go anywhere. If you can't get any more lessons learned out of that project, out of that failure, it's time to stop it. It's time to terminate that project. We have a question from the audience. Frodo, what was your biggest failure and what did you learn from it? Funny because on the pursuefailures.com website, that's the question I, I uh, ask of other people. And <laughs> I'm not sure if I've had you know, one, I mean, because I've been around for a while, so I'm not sure if I can think of sort of one biggest failure I have. Um, but I can think of um, sort of my first big failure in my work was in my first startup where we run out of funding before we finished a product because I was essentially unwilling to pursue sort of an incremental product development approach. I wanted to build the whole thing all at once. And basically that cost me the success of the, that company. Sometimes it's hard. It's hard to know when to give up on the project. I don't know if there's any real magic bullet answer for that, besides the fact that you lose your certain fire for it. Um, I guess it goes for the, almost anything in life. Is when it starts it stops being exciting, um, you just it's time to walk away. I don't. know, Did you have any additional insights on when to when to ter- really terminate projects in terms of uh, you know? I mean, because potentially you could get in a failure spiral where it's like, oh, I'm learning from all these failures, and I'll keep failing and failing and failing and failing until something takes off. At some point, is it, uh, when do you know to give up on something? Well, the really important uh, question. I think it's, it's important not to give up uh, in a in sort of an emotional way where you're just frustrated and you just say, well, that's it. You really should be more deliberate about it and just give up purposefully uh, so that you free up capacity for pursuing other things. And, and I think, you know, if you're no longer excited about a project, you know, you can think about, is there a way you can reframe it so it becomes exciting again? If it's just not a project that's going to attain the vision of wild success 
by any stretch of the imagination, what you want to do is to think about how can you harvest value from that project. And that's really what it's all about. It's, it's harvesting value. So maybe uh, you know, what you had envisioned for a project was, um, was you know, to launch a new ambitious uh, product, say. Let's say this is a, a, a in the work part of your life. And it just turns out that the technology we're going to use wasn't really available yet, or maybe someone else beat you to the market and so forth. But what you still can do is to be proactive about harvesting all the value you can get from that. So maybe you built some other components that you can reuse for another project, or you learned a lot about a particular marketplace or whatever. But it's really getting to the point of recognizing, okay, we can't get any more value from this now. And we have to focus our resources elsewhere. And that's when you pull the plug.